The clash between the gods has begun. What side will you choose? Hey there, it's Theo from Geeky Gamer Guy. This video I'll be previewing Divinus from Lucky Duck Games. Note, just like most of my previews, this video shows prototype components and is subject to change. Also, because of the narrative story driven nature, there may be mild spoilers, but I'll do my best to describe each game element without ruining the fun. Now let's get moving. Ah. Divinus is a competitive legacy digital hybrid game for 2-4 to four players. Players are demigods exploring the land and shaping the world permanently by completing quests for the gods of the two warring pantheons, Greek and Norse, all in the hopes of taking a seat amongst them. To set up, place the game board in the center of the table. Separate the map tiles by their backs and then return some tiles to the box of playing with only 2 or 3 players. Shuffle each stack and fill the number spaces with 1-6 to six from this stack and 7 to 12 from this one. Then open the scenario box to play with, starting with number 1. Each player then chooses one demigod box to play with for the campaign and takes the 6 dice from inside them, returning some dice if playing with more players. Now open up the Divinus app and select start a new game. Players roll their dice and the one who rolled the lowest total takes the first player marker. Then each player sets their dice in front of themselves without changing their faces. These form their ready dice. Now it's time to begin. A game of Divinus plays over several rounds with each player taking a turn clockwise from the table starting with the first player. On a player's turn they must choose one action. In the case of the first scenario they can choose either to explore or rest, though additional actions will be available in future scenarios. To explore, the active player chooses any number of ready dice to place on the numbered spaces, matching it exactly. To do this, each die used can be added or subtracted to the total. For example, to take the tile on number 8, the player places 2 dice with a value of 4 to add together to equal 8. Alternatively, the player wants the 10 tile and places dice adding up to 12 and then subtracting 2. The player then takes the tile and adds it to their map in front of them. A player's map consists of up to 16 tiles in a 4x4 grid. From the second map tile placement on, tiles must be placed adjacent to existing tiles, meaning no diagonals. Terrain types also must match on all sides, meaning seas touching seas, mountains touching mountains, and plains touching plains. Players can also choose to overbuild the chosen tile by placing it on top of another tile in their map, making sure the new tiles aligns with the existing terrains found on adjacent tiles. This also ignores any symbols on the covered up tile. More on symbols in a sec. The other action is to rest. The active player pulls all placed dice and any remaining ready dice, re-rolling them all to new die faces and making them ready once again. Then refill the now empty tile spaces on the main board like done in setup. If for whatever reason one stack is depleted, refill the remaining with the other stack. Now to go more in depth on tiles, they can have faction symbols that can be used to complete quests if a player fulfills it first. Quest cards are revealed at the start of the scenario by the instruction of the app. If at any time on their turn the requirements are met, choose the quest tab on the app to let the game know which player completed it and it will provide further instructions. Usually having the player read some part of the narrative aloud and giving them favorite points with one of the pantheons, but it can also reward things like stickers to place on map tiles or new dice stickers. Stickers on the map tiles can be additional faction symbols or locations. When acquired, the player places the new sticker on their map onto any tile edge that is free of other symbols and contains one terrain type. A tile can have a maximum of four symbols, one on each edge. Location stickers are added just like any other symbol, but in future games when the tile is explored, the active player scans a location to further the story, giving different results based on if the active player was the one who added it to the tile or even someone else. There can only be one location per tile. Now dice stickers add additional numbers that can be used throughout the game when readied. At the beginning of scenario 1, players will choose a die face to place this sticker that allows a die face to be a value of 3 or 6. The player's choice. Lastly, at the beginning of each scenario, god cards from both pantheons come into play. The gods Gaia and Emir come into play in scenario 1, but there will most certainly be others to add and replace as the campaign continues. God cards usually give favor to the player that has either the most of something or the biggest of something. In the case of these two gods, it's the most or biggest of the terrain types on the map. Most means the amount of separate areas with the depicted terrain type, and biggest means the one largest continuous terrain type. Turns go round and round with players performing actions until a player places their final tile to complete their 4x4 grid. The game ends immediately. Press the End Scenario button on the app. 
Then input the player who fulfilled each god card. If playing a 3 plus player game, two players will gain favor. Otherwise in a 2 player game, only one gets favor. Then read aloud the continuing narrative and find out what's coming next. I need to know! Some features for Divinus are a narrative driven tile laying 12 scenario campaign that is completely run by the app. It'll do all the bookkeeping for the players keeping track of each player's rankings in both pantheons as well as a combined faction that will determine different results when exploring locations and completing quests. All players need to do is scan or input and read the story text aloud. I talked about stickers used to alter tiles and dice, but there's even more customization that can be gained through tiles and artifacts that are affixed to the demigod boxes, allowing for more ways to bend the rules to your will. But that's only one way to play. There's two more additional ways to experience the game. After the legacy campaign, Divinus can be played in eternal mode, making a game that can be enjoyed over and over again with infinite replayability. Lastly, there will be single standalone plays with special myths that have quests and gods giving unique setups and new narrative experiences. Ooh, this game is definitely for players that love to play legacy style board games, where their own actions determine what their copy of Divinus will become. You will be manipulating components with stickers, permanently changing die faces and adding abilities to the demigods, making your game as unique as you are. So if any of this makes you feel electric, you should definitely check this one out. I put a link in the comments below for you to check out further. That's it! Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video and want to help out the channel, tapping the like button really helps. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to not miss out on future videos. Until next time, stay Hey Geeky, keep gaming. But I'll do my best to describe each game bell. Uh, the player then. <laughs> but it can also. But it can also. <laughs> oh. Oh. To your will. To your will. <laughs> to your will.